So Blender version 4.5 was just recently released, and if you'd like to learn about all the new features, then I'll have a link here to the page on Blender's website. But in the new update, they have added some new features to Blender's asset browser. So what I've done is just opened up my asset browser and I've opened up my ultimate procedural material pack. If you're interested in purchasing my ultimate material pack, I'll have a link to it in the description. So the first cool feature is if you click right up here on the display mode, you can change the display mode from thumbnails to horizontal list. So this way things are a bit more compact and you can also see the entire names. Whereas some of these longer names, you can see like with this diamond marble floor tiles, it kind of starts to disappear. So if you just change this to horizontal list, you can read it a lot better. I can also scroll back and forth and then there's also some other settings like the preview size so if I still want it to be pretty large and kind of see the previews I can turn this up so let's make this a bit bigger and then I can also change the column size so if you do want to see them really small you could just turn that down but if you have like larger names you could just easily turn that up and then you can just see all the assets. And also if I switch here from my ultimate material pack to my furniture and home asset pack, you can see it's also pretty useful for previewing these assets. So what I might do is just like make the preview size a little bit larger and then maybe turn the column size down a little bit. So real quick, I'm gonna jump back to the previous Blender version before Blender version 4.5. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this 3D printer model here into the scene. So this asset is a collection asset instead of an object asset because it has all these different objects to make up the 3D printer. But if I want to go into edit mode of some of the objects or select each object individually, I'm not able to do that. Why it's doing this, why I can't edit the objects is because the collection is added in as an instance because it is an asset of multiple objects in a collection. So what I would need to do is click on this add collection here and I need to uncheck the instance. And so now you can see that I can select each object, I can move each object around, and I can go into edit mode of each object. So in the new Blender version of 4.5, you can see I can just drop this 3D printer in right there and automatically it's going to be added in, but it's not going to be an instance. Now, if you do want it to be added in as an instance, then you can open up the add collection right here, right after you add the asset and you can just choose the instance button. However, there's another way to control this manually so you can control whether it's an instance or not. So if you click here on the import settings, you can see there is instance collection. So if I turn on when appending, if I check mark this, now when I just drag and drop this in, you can see now it is an instance on default. But I usually don't like using this setting because I wanna be able to move them around and control them and go into edit mode and edit the objects if I want to. So I can just uncheck this when appending here. And so this way I can just drop in these objects and you can see now they're made up of multiple objects. But with how I've set up this product, you can just select the largest object or select the box wireframe and you can use this to control the entire object. So I can move it around and rotate it. And that's the same thing for pretty much all the assets. So if I add in the computer mouse, you can see that's working correctly. Also this office fan, it has a single object, which all the objects are parented to. So I can just move that around. But then if I wanted to like edit the mesh, I could just select each individual object and I can go into edit mode and edit each mesh. Now another really cool new feature of the asset browser is you can take screenshots to create custom thumbnails. So this product is my stylized beach nature asset pack, link is in the description if you want to check it out. And to create this asset pack I had to manually go through and render each image to get a nice preview. So what I'm going to do is select all the assets and I'm just going to remove them as an asset. So I'm going to clear assets. Now I'm just going to pick one of these. So now what I can do here on the shell is just right click and we're going to mark it as asset. But you can see on default, Blender's previews really don't look that nice. Nice. The rotation is a little bit weird and it's not even rendered. So it kind of just looks like you're previewing it in the viewport instead of in the rendered view. So what I can do is hit the end key to open up the side panel and the new feature is to take a screenshot in the viewport. So what I can do is click on the asset, click on the drop down, and I can click on capture screenshot preview. Then what I can do is just click and drag over here and you can see that it's going to make sure it stays a square so I can't make it a rectangle so that's useful. And then I'll just drop that right there and then it's going to appear there as a screenshot. So that's really useful. Now after you click on the button to capture a screenshot, if you are clicking and dragging, you can hold down the shift key and that's gonna switch to a rectangle. So I would normally just keep it as a square because that kind of makes sense for most things. But if I make it like a rectangle, let's do like a really long rectangle. So holding down shift, hitting enter. So you can see now it's a rectangle, but it's basically going to crop the image. So it's still going to be a square. So I'd just use a square so it looks nicer in the asset browser. Let's say that I didn't get it in the correct spot. Well, I can just 
hit the space bar. So while I'm still dragging it around, so before I let go, I can hit the space bar and that's gonna like reorient it so I can stick it there in the middle and then let go and then I can continue to resize it and then just let go and there's our screenshot. Now you can see that it's also gonna show like other things in the viewport like the lines there are the grid. So what you can do is click on this little button here to hide the overlays and then I can click on the drop down, capture screenshot preview and then I can just click and drag and then hit enter and it's gonna look a lot nicer. I can also do this in the material preview. So if I just hit Z, move my mouse down to the material preview, again, capture screenshot preview and I can just hit enter and there's the same screenshot. So if you like that better using the material preview, you can do that. Now, unfortunately, there is a really big downside to using this feature when you're in the cycles rendering engine. So I've just changed the render engine over to cycles. So I'll click on the drop down, capture screenshot preview, and then I can click and drag and let go. But you can see in the cycles rendering engine, unfortunately, it basically failed. So it just really doesn't look that good. So if you're using the cycles rendering engine, it won't work in the rendered view. However, you can still do it in the material preview. So if you're okay with using the material preview, you can go into the material preview. You can click on this button here to hide the overlay. So it looks a little bit nicer just kind of pose the camera to get it how you like and then also if you click on the drop down here you could also use like scene lights and scene world if you wanted to use that so it appears as though it's in the rendered view instead you could also change the hgri preview so maybe i'll change it to like this one so once you have it set up how you like click on the drop down capture screenshot preview and then let's just make a nice preview like that and then hit enter. And so that's gonna make a pretty nice preview. But unfortunately with the cycles rendering engine, you have to be in material preview, not rendered mode. And so this is kind of a problem because there are some shaders and some things in cycles which don't look the same in material preview. For example, things like glass or transparency or other things like that, they don't look the same in the material preview. So if you are using the cycles rendering engine and you do wanna get like an exact perfect render, then you will have to just render out a square image and then click on the file browser to load a custom thumbnail. So a small downside, but this is a new feature. So hopefully in the future, maybe they'll update that and make it work for cycles. And if you're a beginner to using the asset browser, if you don't know how to use the asset browser in Blender, and you'd like to learn how to create your own asset libraries, then I have an asset browser for beginners tutorial, where I show you all the basics of how to set up your own asset libraries in Blender. So link is in the video description if you want to check out that video. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.